This is the second in the series of vector training films. It is assumed that you now know how to do basic patching, select fixtures, set parameter values, store cues and cue lists, and perform basic playback operations. Some lighting devices, such as scrollers, use external dimmers. In this section, we will import and patch scrollers. Scroller channels have two parameters, the fixtures dimmer and the scroller, which is patched as an external dimmer. To create and patch scroller fixtures, open the Tools menu and choose Patch Manager. Click the Create and Patch icon. Click Import Device. Choose Channel Scroller 11 Frames. We will also choose an RGB device for use in the next section on Matrix. Open the drop-down list and choose the scroller device. Navigate to the Number of Fixtures field and enter 4. We will create 4 fixtures. Navigate to the Start Number field. We'll use the default 9, the next channel number. Click Next for the next wizard screen to set the fixtures DMX addresses. Navigate to the Main Port field. We'll use the defaults Port 1. DMX address 9. Click External Dimmer. Let's start the scroller external dimmers at DMX channel 501. Click Finish. The fixtures and their patch information are displayed. Click the check mark to apply the patch. Now we'll create fixtures in the matrix set using the RGB device we imported. Click the Create and Patch icon. Open the list in the Device field and choose RGB Device. Navigate to the Number of Fixtures field. We are planning a 20 by 20 matrix, so we'll patch 400 RGB devices. Click Next to go to the next wizard screen. We'll start patching the matrix fixtures from port 3 DMX address 1. Notice that each device requires three DMX channels. Vector asks confirmation to continue with the patching using port 4 and even port 5. Here we see the patched RGB devices. Apply the patch, but do not exit the patch manager. When working with matrix devices, you must first create the matrix and then map the fixtures to the matrix. Click C to collapse the workspace tree. Click N for navigation mode and click on matrix list. Click the create fixtures icon. The matrix list dialog box opens. This dialog box has three fields, rows, the number of rows in the matrix, columns, the number of columns in the matrix, name, the name of this matrix. We set a matrix of 20 rows and 20 columns. The matrix information is displayed in the main pane. The next step is to map the fixtures to the matrix. Select the matrix from the list. Click S for selection mode. Under the Set node, Expand Matrix. Select all the fixtures by clicking on the first fixture, pressing and holding Shift, and clicking on the last fixture. Now drag and drop the fixture list onto the first matrix cell. Click the exit icon. You are prompted to save the patch. Click Yes. The patch is saved, and the patch manager closes. Now that we have seen how to create and patch fixtures, let's look at how to change or clear the patch in the editor. To patch fixtures to different DMX channels, you must first clear the patch assignments. Let's clear the patch for channels 30 and 31, patch to dimmers 38 and 39, and then patch them to different dimmers. Click Delete. Click Dim. Select dimmers 38 and 39. Click Enter. Confirm the Delete command by clicking Delete. Notice that in the live display an icon shows that these fixtures exist but are not patched. Now let's patch these channels to port 1, DMX 511 and 512 respectively. Select dimmer 511. 
we need to select only the first dimmer of the range. Vector will automatically patch consecutive DMX channels according to the range of channels we choose. Select channels 30 through 31. Click Enter. The selected channels are now patched. To clear these fixtures entirely, we must return to the Patch Manager and after selecting the channel set, click on the Delete Fixture icon. Enter the first fixture number in this field and the last fixture number in the next field. Click OK. These fixtures are cleared. Save the changes and exit the Patch Manager. Let's take a look at Vector's system defaults. Vector's defaults are configured in the System Settings dialog box. To open this dialog, open the Tools menu and choose Settings. The dialog box opens to the Behavior tab. The enabled options are typical when programming in tracking mode. Some of the options are available on the fly on the Editor toolbar. The options that affect the way we program cues are the Default Stage Values group. You can choose Use Default Home Value, which means that when you press Home or Reset, Vector references the values stored with the device profile in the Device Builder. Or Maintain Last Value. Pressing Reset releases the parameters from the editor, but retains the last values. When Automatic Parameter Grouping is enabled, all parameters of the same type, for example all color parameters, are active in the editor when a value is set for one of the parameters in this group. Store options are a way to filter what is being stored in a queue. All these store options are also available on the fly on the editor toolbar in queue mode, so we'll exit the settings dialog box and take a look at how the store options operate. We will demonstrate store options and storing a few queue lists of one on the playbacks. Select spots 1 through 6. Set the dimmer values. Set values for pan and tilt. Click store options. Notice that all editor is selected. This is the default setting in the system settings dialog box. Parameter values in red, selected in the editor, and white, active in the editor, will be stored in the queue. Click Store, click Q1, store this queue in the queue list on Playback 1, and here is our queue. Switch to the Image Wheel Bank. Set the Gobos. Click Store Options, click Only Selected Red. Click Store, Q1, store this as a queue in the queue list on Playback 2. Notice that only the image bank parameters are stored in this queue. Switch to the color wheel bank. Set the color values. Click Store Options. Click All Stage. Click Store. Q1. Store this as a queue in the queue list on Playback 3. Notice that all the values that were output are now stored in this queue. Another Store option is All Parameters for Selected which means that when enabled, all parameters except the dimmer in the selected spots are stored in the queue even if there are no levels set. Select all odd numbered spots. Set values for some of the parameters. Click Store Options. Click All Parameters for Selected. Click Store. Click Q2. Store the queue on Playback 1. Notice that all parameters are stored in this queue regardless if they were active or not. The last store option is all parameters if active. When enabled, if a spot's dimmer intensity is more than zero, 
all parameters will be stored in the queue. Select all even numbered spots, which are group 23. Click Store Options. Click All Parameters if Active. Click Store. Click Q3. Store the queue on Playback 1. Notice that all parameters are stored in this queue regardless if they were active or not. Now let's look at how to program queues with scrollers. First let's open a queue list, queue list 20, on the master playback, AB. Click queue list and 20 on the keypad. Click select for AB. Queue list 20 is now saved in output from AB, the master playback. Select group 6, which we stored as the scroller channel group. Set dimmer levels. Click the scroller parameter button to select and click step up until arriving at the desired frame. Click store. Click select for AB. Q1 is stored. The last channel selection is still active, so just click the scroller parameter button again. Click step up. Click Store, click Select, Q2 is stored. Click the Scroller Parameter button once more, then click Step Up, click Store, click Select, Q3 is stored. We can use this queue list as a color chase. Click Setup, click Select for AB, the Playback Properties dialog box opens. Choose Chase from the queue list mode drop down box. Click Store, press the Go key to run this chase. Queues using the matrix can be manually programmed, or you can use bitmaps and animated graphic files to program the queues. We've already set up a matrix in the patch manager, so let's program some queues manually. To work with the matrix, the matrix programmer must be visible. We'll open a new window for the matrix programmer. Open the window menu and choose New Window. Open the workspace, expand the Live node, expand the matrix list, and choose your matrix. We'll store these queues in queue list 3 on the master playback, AB. Click queue list and enter 3 on the keypad. Press select for AB. Enable group selection on the matrix programmer. Select fixtures on the matrix grid. Click red and set a level, full. Click store and select for AB. We have just stored Q1. Bring red to zero. You can use the dimmer wheel to control the parameter levels for fixtures that do not have dimmers. Select fixtures on the matrix grid again. Select the color using the color picker. Press store. Select for AB. Now we have Q2. Bring the color to zero using the dimmer wheel. Select fixtures again. Select the color using the color picker. Click Store Plus. Now we've just stored the next queue. And we'll store one more queue. Click Go to sequence through the queues. We can make this a chaser. Click Setup. Click Select for AB. Choose Chaser from the Queue List Mode drop down box. Click Go. And we can watch the chaser run. 
Let's turn off the grid in the Matrix Programmer. Click on Show Grid. We can switch directions of the chaser by pressing the double-headed arrow and select for AB. We can also change the rate. Click Rate, click Select for AB. The current rate is displayed in the command line. Use the playback wheel to change the rate. Now we'll take a look at using animated graphics for cues. Let's free the AB crossfader and load QList 4. Now we load the graphic file. On the Matrix Programmer, click on Load from File. Browse to the folder containing your graphic. Select the file and click Open or double click on the file. Position the blue square over the portion of the bitmap that you will be using. Notice that frame 1 of 3 is output. Click Auto Run to view the animation frames. Click again to stop. Click the arrow keys to return to frame 1. Let's store this as Q1. Click Store and select for AB. Click on the arrow to advance to the next frame. Adjust the selected area. And store this as the next Q. Advance to the next frame and store this as the next queue. Click Go to sequence through these three queues. We'll make one more queue using the matrix. This time we'll use a simple bitmap. On the matrix programmer, click Clear Image. Click Load from File, browse to the folder containing your graphic. Select the file and click Open or double click on the file. Position the blue square over the portion of the bitmap that you will be using. Click Store and select. This is Q4. You can program sequential cues to loop or repeat as many times as desired. This creates a kind of mini chaser within a queue list. We'll use the queue list we just programmed to look at this loop feature. Let's program queues 1 through 3 to automatically loop twice. Select queues 1 through 3, click loop on the editor toolbar, and 2 on the keypad for two loops. Click auto follow on the editor toolbar, click enter to store. Let's play this back to see how it looks. Click Go and sit back and watch. Cues 1 through 3 are repeated twice. At the end of the loop cycle, the fade continues onto Q4 and stops when Q4 is complete. To view the cue sheet for this playback, click on the Master tab, click the Cue Sheet tab. To show the loop information, click View. Choose Fit Columns by Title and Value. Notice the loop information displayed in the queue sheet. Click Go to run the queue list. The Master Playback queue sheet shows the fade progression. Vector offers a few methods for dark positioning parameters. We'll use QList 11 to look at these features. Select QList 11 and load it to AB. Now let's play back this QList. Notice the visible parameter moves between Qs 2 and 3. To pre-position the parameters, we'll insert a mark queue between Qs 2 and 3. A mark queue pre-positions parameters on the condition that the dimmers are at 0. 
So click Store and click Q and enter 2.5 on the keypad. This will be the Mark Q's number. Click Mark Q on the Editor toolbar. Click Enter to Store. When inserting a Mark Q, the Q preceding the Mark Q, in this case Q2, automatically becomes a follow-on. The fade to the Mark Q will be seamless. Let's see how this works during playback. Let's go to Q1. Press Go to start the fade to Q2. When the fade to Q2 has completed, the fade to Mark Q 2.5 begins, bringing the parameters to their levels in Q3. Press Go again. Notice that all the parameters are preset to their Q3 levels. Another dark positioning option is force black cues. We'll use Q list 11 again and just delete the Mark Q and Q2, the Q with the dimmer at zero. Force black cues don't require a cue where the dimmer is at zero. Let's fade to Q1 and then to Q3 and notice the gobo position and color moves between the cues. Similar to mark cues, we'll insert a cue. A forced black cue inserted between cues 1 and 3 quickly forces the dimmer to zero and immediately moves the parameters. Vector automatically inserts this cue using the closest cue number. To program a forced black cue, click Store. Select Q3. Forced black cues are inserted before the selected cue. Click Force Black on the Editor toolbar. Click Enter. Vector has automatically inserted Q2.99, the Force Black queue. Notice that this queue is a follow-on queue. As soon as it completes, the fade to Q3 begins. The third option is Look Ahead. Look Ahead works very differently than Mark and Force Black Cues. You don't have to insert or change cues. You program a Look Ahead mask that is always applied on the condition that there is at least one cue where the dimmers are dark between the cues with the parameter moves. Look Ahead must be enabled in the System Settings, so open the Tools menu and choose Settings. Click on Look Ahead to enable the feature. Click OK to exit the dialog box. We'll use Cue List 11. There are three Qs in QList 11. In Q2, the dimmers are at zero. The parameter moves are between Qs 2 and 3. Let's program the look ahead mask. Select all spots using the automatically generated group. Press Store. Click Look Ahead Mask on the editor toolbar. Click Enter. The look ahead mask will always be applied whenever there are parameter moves in the participating fixtures and the moves are preceded by a cue where the spot's dimmers are at zero. Let's play back our cue list and see how this works. Fade to Q1. Notice that when the dimmer reaches zero, the parameters move and are ready for the fade to Q3. When you want to disable the automatic look-ahead operation, simply give the dimmer a value of 1%. Click Edit Q on the Editor toolbar, select Q2, select the spots, set the dimmer levels for 1%, click Update, and Enter. To examine the Look Ahead Mask, click Exam, click Look Ahead Mask on the Editor toolbar, and click Enter. The exam opens in the Active pane or on the designated exam pane. We hope you have found this training film informative and helpful in expanding your vector programming skills. For more information, see the Vector Reference Guide. So until next time, light on.